the new Parkway Theater, where good food, diverse entertainment, and community create a place for everyone. For showtimes and special events, check out www.thenewparkway.com. You are listening to High School Five Hundred Nine, where sports, comedy, and comedy and some culture. There's nicknames you can reserve for yourself and that certain people have the privilege to use with you. I see there's a gray area. And way, I, no, 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 I, no, no. He made the nickname for himself, Derek. He certain, made the nickname for himself. Yeah, he's, but, he's ripping on his nickname. All right, Pedro, Daddy Dick. How many How many women got that as your nickname, though? You ain't going to let just some rando call you Daddy Dick. Why not? <laughs> If the woman husband want to call your daddy dick, then he allow it. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Why am I going to be mad if somebody going to call me that? Why? Exactly. <laughs> Cockholding has changed now, Jared. It used to be, used to okay. cockhold somebody, and they would hide and, and be halfway with the closet door halfway open. Now, <laughs> they don't want to open the door for you. You're sitting down having a beer, feeding you, and talking sports. And if they don't want the guy to call him daddy dick, they call him daddy dick. <laughs> In other news, the Olympics has been going on. The Winter Olympics. Hey, you guys been watching it? I have watched more than I hate the men. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all sports junkies. Yeah. I'm a sports junkie. I, so yeah, that's why I watch I it. Can, yeah, I can't, I can't do it, man. Some of that you stuff. Know, I, you know I, that I time when you sitting there and you like, man, I'm gonna change my wife's oil. I'm like, well, I don't know what the fuck he doing. I'm gonna watch goddamn curling. <laughs> yeah, it's ending. The it's Winter ended. Olympics had its two weeks run. It was beautiful, you know, momentous event. There was scandal as usual. There was questionable ethics as usual. There was, you know, I'm saying a lot of people probably having sex inside the hotel rooms as usual. Um, and there was no, a- no, that was not happening. Oh, the, Dude, the Chinese government was like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. like, Dude, they were husband and wives that couldn't even see each other. <laughs> they saw each other through a plastic screen. Right before he competed, it was like it was like two pla- two big ass like plastic things. It was like a scene. It was like a they had to blow. List. Here's the craziest thing. Yes, and they had to blow kisses at each other with their mask on. That's nice. Like, dude, right, this well, was draconian, dude. Hey, bro. Well, I'm gonna say is that they didn't have the Olympics didn't get shut down by COVID, so <laughs> they was doing something right. No, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't because when you when you tested positive, you went into extreme lockdown. They allowed that one bobsledder, that black lady. She mm-hmm. was allowed to have like, dude, she had like weights like a big so she could do squats and shit. That was it. And, a, and it was a small ass room. Like she's sleeping on top of that bar or something. <laughs> I'm like, she was like, that was the quarantine. It was horrible. They didn't get, they, they didn't even get internet reception when they were quarantined. <laughs> like, dude, we don't want you spreading no information about how you're doing. We want people to not know how you're doing at all. Dude, that um, shit was draconian. Well, in, in, in Olympic news, uh, one of the highlights is uh, Finnish cross country skier Remy Lindholm had an issue um, with his PP. <laughs> <laughs> the man suffered. <laughs> The man <laughs> suffered, and you over here laughing. <laughs> you can't even make it through the goddamn. <laughs> the motherfucker's penis froze. <laughs> the motherfucker's penis froze after a. They had to shorten the race by twenty k to a thirty k race because of the frigid conditions. Um, however, those safety measures still did not uh, keep Remy Lindholm from getting a frozen penis at the end of the race. What do you guys think about that? He should do porn now. Man got frozen penis, dude. He should, he should do porn. Like John Wayne Babbitt? <laughs> Richard Sickle. Come on, dude. <laughs> That's a great name. That's a great one. <laughs> I can't follow that one, Jerry. <laughs> Apparently, he said that uh, applying heat after the race uh, allowed it to come back to normal temperature, but the pain became excruciating upon that fact. So, yeah, guys, trying to do any cross-country skiing? Yeah, see, this is, this is what I mean, Jared. Uh, I want to give a quick credit corner shout out to Jared for uh, putting Winter Olympics. Hey, have anyone anyone here been skiing? I, I, I'm, Jared, I'm, Jared not, skis ridiculously. Skis. He can okay. ski good. Okay, uh, most of the black folks don't ski, and I. What are you talking about, man? It was it was some black people skiing this year. 
Well, <laughs> they looked like they knew what the fuck they was doing, but they was skiing. They was all skiing. Last, last time I went skiing, I was in a tractor trailer and somebody skied right into me. You know what? This is sad. You know what was good? You know how in Summer Olympics, a lot of those contestants from other countries, even this country, they have like some stories, like from them growing up, them making it through some things. Even Lolo, uh, what was her name? Lolo Jones. Lolo Jones. She was porn, living in like the bottom of some basement of a sh- of a condemned place. Oh. Usually the Summer Olympians have great stories. And the Winter Olympics never, never have a story, right? It's like, oh man, you know, she, uh, she had to move from Torrance, California, up to Tahoe so they could ski every day. That's the, so the good was that the NBC telecast did not try to paint a sad story anywhere. They didn't try it at all. They just stuck to the games. It's sad that that's the good, that they didn't try to paint no story. Another good, a lot of people of color from the United States did well, even if they weren't representing the United States, right? There was a Puerto Rican bobsledder. Oh, no, she was, a, excuse me, Puerto Rican uh, luge runner. She almost died out there. So I think she did well because she she actually walked away from her accident. Uh, she's actually from Texas, though. A couple of people that represent China that was actually from California, one from Beverly Hills, one from San Francisco. The black woman that's also the figure skater. I mean, that speed skater that won gold. And also a two-woman bobsled team, a two African-American, two black African-American, whatever you want to call, whatever floats your boat, that finished silver. Some of the Asian Americans did really well figure skating. Vincent um, uh, Chin won gold. You know, it's funny. We think of Winter Olympics as a white sport, which it mostly is, especially in other, the Nordic countries and other countries. But, you know, the people of color came from the United States, came and showed it out. You know, you give them a chance, give them an opportunity, it might happen. Last time I uh, went skiing, sure? it was down Baldwin Hills. <laughs> <laughs> which one is this, Jared? This is the Haitian dude. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, he was out there. He actually did pretty well, better than what I thought a Haitian dude would do. Uh, apparently, I ain't gonna lie. I got how, a real wait, a minute, how, wait a minute. He has, hold on, hold on. He's an Asian? How do Haitian. you afford them? Who sponsored this? How do you afford them skis in that shithole country? Tell me. <laughs> he didn't just say that. Our question of the day. Let's get to question of the day. Question of the day. Is the player empowerment movement Ruining American sports. This weekend, Kirk Herbstreet was on ESPN calling one of the bowl games, one of these really important bowl games, actually one of the actual like big ones that actually has some ranked teams in it and, you know, has a little prestige to it and said, I think this era of players just don't love football. He was talking about uh, a lot of players sitting out these bowl games um, during these during the bowl season and not playing in these bowl games, not representing their alma maters or the universities and uh, giving it their all and finishing out the season um, in that way. So um, my question of the day is, is the player empower, empowerment movement ruining American sports? Um, according to Aaron, it is. Problem is with today's sports, we have too much information, so it soils the game. I kind of I kind of agree with Kurt uh, Herb Street a little bit, just a little bit, mm-hmm. because with the money, the information, how big the money is, it's the problem in NBA, it's the problem with baseball, it's the problem with now college football. So it's it's they didn't have it that way. They wasn't smart enough to get the information. So he's kind of sour about it. You, you see what I'm saying? He's bringing across his experience. You know, it ruins my experience. I would like to see some good football. I watched Oregon versus who did they who did they play in the um in their bowl game? Anybody know? Mm-hmm. Oregon was playing probably. somebody that didn't matter. No, Oregon, <laughs> come on, man. So in the first half, in the first half, you can see Oregon just mailing it in. They didn't give no effort. Nobody was blocking. Oh, they the played Oklahoma. Come, Oklahoma. Okay, so in the in the first half, I'm like, wow. You can see one team looking like they're just mailing in, the other team looking like, hey, they're trying to prove something. It was the Midwest against the West. See, you know how they get all the twerks, you know, the perks and everything, being in Oregon and guys go there for the swag. You see the Oklahoma team that's, that, that's in the dirt, they're in the grime of everything. They was actually playing hard until the second half Oregon woke up. That was the kind of balance Kirby Hirschstreet was talking about. You, you got people just... It's just like you have no feeling for these bowl games if you don't get to the – if it's not the top echelon, it's not the playoff game, 
uh, they feel like, okay, you just you just screwed us over. I'm gonna get this money. Um, F what y'all going through. F the TV contracts and all that stuff. I'm taking yeah. care of self, which I agree on. But it does taint it taints the sport. It brings less less effort. It brings I got to take care of myself. I'm not really thinking about the next man because I'm going into the future. I got to protect my investment. Mm-hmm. So it's now it's knowledge. It's not you're not playing for art and everything. Everybody's paying for knowledge these days. This is what he had to say. It was his actual clip. The amount of money, like, what's the difference as a player in saying these games are meaningless when, Des, we played in, quote-unquote, meaningless games. I mean, I know you guys were here a lot, but I just don't understand. If you don't make it to the playoff, how is it meaningless to play football and compete? Isn't that what we do as football players? We we compete. So I don't know if if changing and expanding it is going to change anything. I really don't. I think this era of player just doesn't love football. That's what I was about to say. You made the question bigger than, than, than this one issue, right? When you said player power movement. Because I think this issue isn't really about player power movement. Uh, is player power movement, to answer that question, bad for American sports? Just some American sports. Like NBA, for example. Let me just say the names out. NBA, we saw two players leave because a coach got in their face and told them that they needed to have more effort. An older coach, a guy that's old enough to be my father's age, John Lucas, well-respected in the game. John Lucas was one of those guys that saved a lot of NBA players' career, helped them get off drugs, and helped stay it off, right? And he got in Kevin Porter Jr.'s and uh, Christian Christian Woods' face. And Kevin Porter Jr. left the stadium right after that. He didn't get their face to fight, to disrespect them. He told them they ain't put out the effort. And he was right. They probably went out and partied all the night before. NBA has a player empowerment problem. I don't think a lot of the sports, some don't, some do. NBA is the one that really has the problem. Christian Wood mm-hmm. refused to go back in. Look, I like uh, Steven Silas. I, I like him as a coach. He looks really good, really knowledgeable. Unlike some of the coaches Pedro talked about earlier today, he knows how to run sets and plays and calls in the huddle. And James Harden quits on him before he even can meet the guy, right? Here you are, you got an African-American coach who's really good, and they quit on him. And so I think the NBA has a player empowerment problem. I don't think a lot of other sports do. Uh, as far as this situation with Kurt Herb- Herbstreet, he needs to understand that those games are exhibition games, right? They yeah. count for nothing. They count for nothing other than just to grease some pocketbooks that aren't the players' pocketbooks. It's different when him and Desmond Howard played. There wasn't as many bowl games. So it gave you another chance to shine a light, maybe to get some NFL scouting, maybe just to get, you know, just to have one more chance. That's what they have, the Shrine Bowl and the Senior Bowl and some of those other. Everyone don't make that. Everyone don't make the Senior Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. So back in the days, it was a big deal. Like bowl season was over January 1st back in the day. It wasn't, and it wasn't a lot of them. It was like, you know, four bowls on January 1st, a couple spring, spring throughout like December, just a yeah. few of them. It wasn't like now. Well, where it's like- 30 years ago in 1991, 90, 91 season, there were 19 bowl games. Currently yeah. this year, there were 44 bowl games. So <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how many there was in 1988, 1989, around the time I started writing, because in it's, 89. It's probably like, similar in the teens. I think it was less than that. Because I know when Kurt Herbstreit played, because like you finished third in your in your conference, you didn't play anything, no matter what your record was. 15, 15 in 1980. So See, throughout the that 80s, sounds about right. There's there's yeah mid teens, um, and I, mm. I think I think that's a fair assessment. It's like you have all these different money grabs where you have games that don't mean anything. When you look at the the number of different bowls, like in six and six teams that that were playing in bowl games this year. It is a meaningless game. There's no reason to feel happy about going 500 on a season. Yeah, you didn't have a losing season. That's what six wins means that you won't have a losing season as a college team, but it doesn't mean that you're actually like playing for anything other than just, yeah, your own, like, you know, pride and honor. And, and the reason why I ask is, is the player empowerment movement, you know, ruining sports is because a lot of this is being framed through the lens of analyzing the player decisions not to play or who they don't want to play for or where they want to play and when they want to play. See, I think it's different because college is amateur. Those players are amateur. They're not making money. Yeah, so they have the full right to be like, I'm not going to play. Like, I'm not yeah. going to pay for it. I'm not being I, comp- I They might have that. their... Whereas NBA and professional sports, you get a paycheck for showing up. Or if you're the NBA, you go on salary, so you don't have to show up. So at the college level, Kirk Herbstreit knows, you know, I think it's one of those generational things where he played in a time where they were okay with it mm-hmm. being where our bodies are being used. And they both were, I, I'm assuming Herbstreit was, was a quarterback. 
Corpus is a quarterback for Ohio State, but he was a running quarterback. Okay, he's a quarterback, so he's the most protected player on the field, even though no, played no, 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 this product um, is because they love the sport. They were stars or had great careers and they're known in the sport and they're, they're good talkers and their money is derived off of them being able to talk about these games and events continuing. So for me, they're a little bit biased in their own pr- perspective on how they're analyzing these players, not loving the sport. Cause I'm sure if Herb street and Desmond Howard came up in today's time, they probably would be like, yeah, like I might not play that game. That game's not worth it. Our team, it's not highly ranked. We barely had a winning season. I'm not complaining this bowl game. And that should be fair. I think I think when you have the old heads as you age into becoming conservative based on how you lived your life coming up and you look at the new st- standard, sometimes you might you, you, you evaluate it as being them not loving it or, you know, I'm saying being entitled. And it's like there might be that there might be a little bit of that, but also like they're being entitled against what a, a multi-billion dollar industry that is not paying them. In that way, I think that, you know, the bowl games and 15 bowl games, the 44 bowl games, NCAA football, you know, what I'm saying and basketball making billions of dollars every year without paying anybody other than the people that work in the NCAA and the coaches is fucked up. Well, you, and we, and we you also got to remember, Jerry, the money wasn't in the sport like it is now. So yeah. when those guys did yeah. play, they did play for love of the game. Even though there was money to make a bowl, it wasn't what it is now. There's a reason why universities started selling out. Syracuse left the Big East. All, it was a football move. Syracuse is a basketball school, but they had a football team. And the president was like, we can make more money if we go to another football. Con- we got to go to a bigger conference that has football. That's why they went to the ACC. The money wasn't there back when, when those guys played, right? No, not, and I'm not talking about the money to grease your pockets, right? That, mm-hmm. that, that envelope that Chris Carter was getting at the end of each game. I'm talking about like the money still, it wasn't big time money like it is now. University mm-hmm. presidents are fired because of college football. Like that wasn't true back then. They did play for the love of the game. So he might have a little point there, but the circumstances were different. You know, with that assessment, he needs to, you know, preface it by being like, from my perspective and my experience, I don't think players love the game the same way. And that's fair. But to kind of the way he said it was kind of, a, I feel like a little more condescending being like, these players just don't love the game. And, and, and you know, they're, they're they don't they're love it like up. he did. They don't, well, he loved it because he still got a job for it. And he been had a job for it. Just like Tim Tebow loved it because his legacy is built on that shit. In sports news, there's a good one, guys. Uh-huh. Lana Rhodes, a former adult film star. Don't come with that old ass news here. Slams the <laughs> NBA father of her child on Instagram saying, he was really nice until she got pregnant. And then he basically told her to kick rocks and hasn't talked since. What do you guys think about that? Do you know who it is, Jerry? I don't know who there, that is. Well, this is going to get to our Who You Taking uh, segment today also. The two leaders in the clubhouse are either Blake Griffin or Kevin Durant. Who are you guys taking to have impregnated Lana Rhodes and told her to kick rocks? Uh, could you uh, can you put a picture of her on yeah. to share the screen? She used to be really good looking, and then she got it. She got some plastic surgery done, which didn't make sense because she was really good looking, oh, and she looked movie. really bimbo ish after that. She was really like the girl next door who's hot look, and then they just Lana Rose, and then she kind of got you know, uh, blasted you know, by some other porn stars because you know they say she was doing. Drugs and shit. She's kind of crazy, man. But I mean, she seemed like she she when she quit porn, she really got her life together. All of a sudden, she gets knocked up. My guess is Blake Griffin because he's a dirty, sleazy motherfucker. He got kids all around the fucking state. And you always amazing with the knowledge, <laughs> the backstory. All right, all right, I think I, Kevin Durant. I think Kevin Durant the night her her career arc. Like man, this is because Kevin Durant is also very kind of lazy, right? He likes basketball, and that's almost it. I mean, he sleeps with women. Don't get me wrong, but. I don't know who does. Yeah, I don't. I don't search. Um, we know you don't search it. That ain't for you. That's why I'm the expert in this. But we want to talk. That's why I come to you for cars. You come to me when it comes to talk about these type of women. 
<laughs> we, you ain't got to put no disclaimer out there, Pedro. I'm putting it out there. I'm the person. What, what, what nationality? She's white. Yeah, she looks she's exotic, white. but she's white. Beautiful white woman. She probably drinks pumpkin spice lattes. I don't think she drinks pumpkin spice hanging around these brothers. She asked for the size BBC. Like she, she don't say hey. in a venti. She say in a BBC. To quote my boy Orlando Jones, I don't know what greasy nappy head nigga she's sleeping with. <laughs> you remember that from a uh, double take when he said that? that was my favorite line of that movie. I'm about to do another cutty corner shout out with these basketball players. If I was a basketball player, I could understand this one. One, she's gorgeous. Two, she's she doesn't crave spotlight. She ain't the I will, brightest I will, star I will in the say sky. This. I, I saw the baby. I saw the picture of the baby. Uh-huh. And that baby is darker than Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin. So oh, it is. Uh, be honest, so I never heard of Blake Griffin. Griffin. Could be James Hart. That baby be honest, got a when full she, head of hair. I got a hairline too. Look at that shit. When she first had the baby, I, I heard when I heard as an NBA player, I figured it was uh the rumors I heard that was Kevin Durant. I never even heard about the Blake Griffin, but I just won't put it. Uh, that baby's huge. I think it's Tristan Thompson's baby. I, I, that's where I put my money. Yeah, <laughs> if, there's an uncla- if there's an unclaimed baby by an NBA <laughs> player, I'm starting with Tr- Tristan Thompson. Tristan Thompson. Oh, no, I think a- the reason she doesn't name him is because she she has gotten money, and I think it's part of the agreement. I don't know if that could be KD. KD is way too – that baby is, is, is huskier and bulky. It got brighter shoulders as KD. You going to tell me that's <laughs> KD's baby? I don't know. Look I mean, it's like... a baby. It got baby fat on it, Jared. Well, look at the picture you're sharing right now with the video on the right. That's Blake Griffin's baby right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that does. That's Blake, Blake Griffin's Griffin. baby, y'all. <laughs> I'm telling you, Blake Griffin is a sleazy dude. He had he impregnated Cameron Brynn early on. And who's Cameron who's Brynn? Cameron, Cameron, Cameron Brynn's a girl that, that gets impregnated by athletes. Former USC volleyball player. She also has Matt Leiner, baby, while she was in college. And then, she, oh, you'll like her. She's a pumpkin spice type girl, Jared. Mm-hmm. Cameron Brynn. Can't and then she had Blake Griffin, baby. I think she might have had a couple babies by Blake Griffin, and he never married her so. wife girl while he was with the Clippers. That's, that's our right. that's it. That's our new segment right there, man. Right. We was gonna put a random picture of a woman on on the screen. And have and I Aaron identify our life story? <laughs> <laughs> life story. Like it's identify the most notable <laughs> two. I don't Notable think you realize how amazing this is every time it happens. Jerry, can you put in old pictures of Lana Rose? Put in old pictures of Lana Rose. I, I have to say, after looking at that updated up close baby picture, I got four candidates. Seth or Steph Curry. <laughs> Damn. Um, it's really possible. Oh, come on. Um, <laughs> don't put in young. I said old pictures, Jared. Old Jared, pictures. You put young, man. Jared, I have a, I have a, I have a family, Jerry. <laughs> put in old man. pictures. I didn't old, say put in young roads, there. Old pictures. <laughs> no, oh my God, get off this of this. Is, just, just delete it, Jerry. This is, delete this it, Jerry. What, you, you messed up. This, <laughs> this is old pictures. This is Jerry. What you Jared. told me to put? Everything yeah. that you told me to do. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, that's the ones you meant, Aaron. You know those that was not what I meant. <laughs> That's the that's the only ones we know, nigga. She not taking pride. She I ain't out for her. They can have her. so many photos of her. <laughs> now oh, get, get it off the what, screen. Brad, Brad what, got what, kids. Get it off. What other what other, other way do you all, what other way do you know her? Nigga, <laughs> like, her <laughs> old pictures. Nigga, when she used to play, play basketball in middle school. Like, what other picture are you looking for? Those no, I'm looking for her when she first got yeah. into the game. That's exactly what it was. No, I, I, I didn't want. Out. I didn't want pictures of that. That. <laughs> that's how do you know? Her? That's in the high that's, school. That's, you know that's you know NSWF. Did you know? I mean NSFW. You only knew her from the old photos. I, no, no yeah, photos. I did, but I wanted clothes photos. Jared over here. Doing oh, oh, you wanted old that's not the clothes photos, Lana Rhodes. <laughs> It's like, I'm looking for an LL Cool J picture. The old one, with the one without the greasy lips. Nigga, come on, man. You, you thought you were going to see her talking in front of Congress? The Miami Dolphins have hired a new head coach to replace Brian Flores. If you guys thought they were being racist, they are not being racist. Want to know why? They hired another coach that is not white. He is, they say biracial, but he is not white. That's for sure. I say we kill him. Shut the door, nigga. Mike McDaniels, the offensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers, has been hired to be the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. And since he is not white, (laughs) (laughs) the Niners are going to be compensated with two, not one, but two 
compensatory third round, third yeah, round, third round picks in the next two years drafts because of this hiring practice. So the Miami Dolphins can fire a nigga for being too uppity. Then they can hire somebody who's not white. So, you know, the NFL keeps winning. <laughs> man, that man, that man could have been in that uh, Rebecca Hall movie with Ruth Nega and Tessa Thompson passing. And so it says he's, his dad is black. Is what like like what kind of black? Like like that one drop rule black? Like 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 bare minimum one drop rule black? Uh, Eighteen twenty sensibilities black? Is he that kind of black? His dad must have looked like logic. His, it's like, man, his daddy make making Marco look like a black Nubian queen. <laughs> no, say what you said. Who he, who he made who he makes making Marco look like? Wait, you said make make Marco look like a uh, 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 Grace Jones? Hey, hey, what's the matter with you? Stop that! Stop it! Stop it! Will you stop it? Get out of here! I'm mad. The law. I mean, I don't believe this. You are going to turn down a pussy like this. That's the kind of white this dude is. This dude, man. This dude make make logic look like uh, look like Bill Duke. Now you see something? You know you don't fucked up, right? No, I said no. I said I pulled into the garage at <laughs> no, no, no. You know you don't fucked up, right? <laughs> That's crazy, man. It's like uh, man, he make logic look like Paul Mooney. But white folks, you shouldn't have made up, nigga. I didn't make it up. It's too bad. I say nigga a hundred times every morning. It makes my teeth white. Nigga, 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 nigga. <laughs> exactly, dude. <laughs> this dude ain't got a black feature to begin with, man. Not one. Not one. Not hair. Not a nose. Not a beard. Not this picture, nothing. he looks like he could be like Middle Eastern or have like a little bit like, you know, I don't know. He's just, he's got straight hair. He's got a little bit of tan, tan to him. He can tan. He can tan because other pictures he ain't he ain't looking too tan. He can tan. We know he can tan. We can, but Italians can but tan. Look like, that's what I'm saying. It, 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 you know, Greek. You know, the Greeks can tan. You know, to be honest, a lot of people can tan. Even Swedish people can tan. Well, so the main reason he, this he is, looks more this like is, Pete uh, Davidson. Well, so the main reason this is uh, uh is news because the 49ers get two compensatory picks it's purely based on the league's diversity development and hiring incentive program. And because it's an Mr. To the fire, nigga, is biracial, a not black, a not white they get two compensatory picks. That, that doesn't make sense to me. They lost the coach um, and they fired. Don't forget, two days ago, they fired a black coach. Look that up, Jared. 49ers fired black coach. I want you to see. And they fired him because they asked him to take a 60% pay cut. He's the guy that developed George Kittle. And they fired him two days ago. And now they're getting picks. John Embry. If he was in New Orleans, if he was in, if he, if he was in Jacksonville, he'll take six percent pay cut. But he can't live out here in the Bay Area. Six exactly. percent less than what he was making. He take that six percent pay cut. Next thing you know, he's written that studio apartment next door to me, Brandon. I can see if they're like, man, we gave you a sweetheart deal. We were paying you two million dollars a year. We need you to make eight hundred thousand dollars a year. He'd be like, all right, fine. To be a tight ends coach, sure. But uh, I don't think he's making that much money. He was so. making tight end coach money. And they wanna... <laughs> Man, which job in their mind? Even McDonald's don't ask people to take it. There's motherfuckers that fuck up the fry machine and that fuck up every order. And they don't ask them to take a 60 percent pay. Yeah, 60 percent is a bit egregious. That's kind of what un- job asks you to take more than half your pay cut. You know what? That was them wanting to fire them without first. They, they, they were like, hey, man, we gonna make them quit. And he was like, nah, I ain't taking the pay cut. I got a contract. I'm sticking to it. And they're like, well, we got to fire you then. Well, because didn't the Port Harris hire somebody else as an assistant head he coach? He was too? already the assistant head coach. They hired yeah. Anthony Lynn, the former they, Chargers coach, to be head, tra- man, former Chargers head coach. they only did that so that way when he get another job, they get more compensatory picks. This shit is getting outrageous, <laughs> man. Dude, you just need to start hiring people. Like, <laughs> you got what a chance. You, what do you want, Aaron? Do you want the I want Ward Connolly to work to be over this. The same motherfucker that got rid of of the front of action in the UC system. I need him to be over this in the NFL because I don't want you just to do shit just to do it. Because the 49ers, it it clearly looks like they're taking advantage of this knowing they'll get more picks. 
they don't need to hire Anthony Lynn. They already got a running back coach. They already got you. And you're not gonna hire him as offensive coordinator because you saw what he did in San Diego. Yeah, well, maybe. No, no, but he was the def- he was a defensive coach. I thought he was. Nah, he, got well, he's a running around. back. He was a running back in the league. Well, he, See, that, and that's another thing that gets me. I'll be seeing people that played offensive positions that were black in the league, and all of a sudden, next thing I know, they DB coaches and stuff like that. It's like you just playing quarterback. Put you at DB. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Dungy. He was, he was drafted as a quarterback and got changed to cornerback. Well, yeah. So shout out to Mike McDaniels, the not white guy. That <laughs> he's like, man, he makes Pete Davidson <laughs> look like a young Malcolm X. <laughs> Dude, well, I think well, I think it's nuts. Well, I think I think it really says a lot about the NFL that you have to put your like your assistant coaches race. Uh, gives you points somehow in the draft system. Nobody knows what? his race. Nobody <laughs> knew he wasn't. Nobody knew he wasn't not a that's white dude. <laughs> no, <laughs> and that's the thing, Brandon. You got to look at like his Instagram, dude. I don't see any part of his. He didn't grow up in a black neighborhood. At least give me that. At least he grew up in, or near a black neighborhood, right? In Aurora, Colorado. Yeah, give me something. He grew up. He grew up. Probably went to Columbine. It is Pride Month, y'all. It is Pride Month. With it being Pride Month, there are a lot of sports teams that are wearing Pride-themed uh, attire. Well, in Florida, the Tampa Bay Rays, several players opted out of wearing the Pride Night-themed hats and patches. What do you guys think about that? Do they really hate gays like Tim Hardaway? Tim Hardaway, last question before we let you go. How do you deal with a gay teammate? First of all, I wouldn't want him on my team. And um, second of all, you know, if he was on my team, I, I would, you know, really distance myself from him because um, uh, uh, I don't think that's right. And, you know, I, I, it, I don't think that, you know, he should be in a locker room while we're in a locker room. And it, it's just a whole lot of other things. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even be a part of that. But, you know, it's stuff like that going on, and there's a lot – uh, other people I hear like that that's still in the closet and don't want to come out the closet, but, you know, um, I, I just leave that alone. You know that what you're saying there, though, Timmy, is flatly homophobic, right? It's just flat, it, it's bigotry. Well, you know, I, you know, I hate gay people, so, um, um, you know, I, I let it be known. I don't like gay people. I don't like to be around gay people. I don't, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm, homo, I'm homophobic. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. It, it shouldn't be in the world for that or in the, in the United States for it. So, yeah, I, I don't like it. He still made the Hall of Fame. God damn. It's crazy, too, because, like, if motherfucker opted to not wear, like, a Memorial Day uniform, <laughs> then it's, like, a, such a big problem. Like, that's yeah. crazy. Players cited uh, faith as the reason for not wanting to uh, wear it. Uh, it says well, more, more than half the players appeared to participate. However, pitchers Jason Adam, Jalen Beeks, Brooks Raley, Jeffrey Springs and Ryan Thompson were among the players who peeled off sunbursts on their sleeves and wore the standard hats. So this just this just narrowed it down to those those three or whatever. Five, don't yeah. Four, five. five. Don't put it on. Don't put it on the whole team. No, no, it's not the whole team. Several players decided not to. Adam, uh, Jason Adam spoke on behalf and said a lot of it comes down to faith, to like a faith-based decision. Mm-hmm. So it's a hard decision because ultimately Paul right. said that. Uh, said what we want is them to know uh-huh. that we are all welcome and love, know that all are welcome and love here. But when we mm-hmm. put on our bodies, I think a lot of guys decided that it's just a lifestyle and that mm-hmm. maybe not that they look down on anybody or think differently. It's just that maybe mm-hmm. we don't want to encourage it if we believe in Jesus, who encouraged us to a lifestyle that would abstain from that behavior, just like Jesus encourages me as a heterosexual male to abstain from sex outside mm-hmm. of the confines of marriage. It's right. no different. It's not judgmental. It's not looking down. It's just what we believe in right. the lifestyle he's encouraged us to live, for uh-huh. our good and not to be withheld. But again, we love men and women. We care about them and we want them to feel safe and welcome here. So, what but do you guys did, think about that? But did they know the uh, pastor's also in the closet? <laughs> Go on, Pastor. <laughs> they don't know uh, why they ain't wearing nothing. They might as well go ahead and support their pastor in the choir director. What's the problem? Uh, hey, gay. <laughs> they just hide behind Jesus. God told me not to be gay, not to come out with my my true my true uh, my true feelings and everything. I'll just go ahead and molest this boy behind the altar. 
But we have sexual desires, right? So you got a bunch of men locked up in one place. All of them get hard. All of them's horny. All of them got sexual desires. So what are they going to do? You won't let them have a woman. Somebody's going to have to give us some booty. First of all, yeah, Jesus Jesus didn't say, uh, there's nowhere in the Bible Jesus said you don't bust another man up in the ass. doesn't say that in the Bible. <laughs> That's in the Old Testament. Didn't so say not to me either, Pedro. Hey, hey, it's in the Old Testament. So, yeah, it didn't say not to, but you know I'm saying it's not in the Bible. So these guys need to stop using certain verses and whatever they want to use in the Bible to... Um, Try to push the faith off on people and be hating on people. Hey, look, I'm a man. I'm a heterosexual man that love having regular sex with BBWs, okay? There's no reason not to wear pats supporting other people that think different, different, different from you. It is okay just for one day or whatever it is a week, just, just for pride. There's a lot of gay dudes come and watch your games, a lot of gay dudes in church. So go ahead and tell that brother, hey, you love him. It's just a little simple patch. I don't want to hear all that all that silly shit. And y'all been hiding behind the curtains with all this, all these foul spirits y'all been playing around with, having sex with teenagers. How about that? Don't support that. I am delivered! I was hoping you would play that soundbite to go with this. One thing, if they were against like the the corporatizing of of the pride flags, how it's basically in every goddamn product. Like right. I'm like, man, are these organizations really celebrating pride or how to make money off during this month, like yeah. like Walmart making some pride ice cream. Yeah, I, I'm kind of torn because you know Pedro is our regular, is our pastor of everything regular. But I think Pedro, you make a good point. Like it's it's supporting other peoples who have been, you know, marginalized or subjugated or oppressed in some way, or, you know, have it's just, it's just recognizing and giving acknowledgement. Um, on the other hand, I also do get like some players who, you know, saying don't want to support certain agendas as they will say, whether it's that or, well, then are you supporting the military agenda? Are you supporting this? So like, I understand like players wanting to be more aware of what they're putting on their bodies and what they support and don't support and be open with their voice about what they will willfully support. And uh, so I, I, I kind of afford them the right to make this decision. I feel like it's, it's, it's frustrating, but it's, they have different viewpoints than me and different expectations. And uh, I just will keep, you know, just keep an eye on what they, what they decide to support in the future. What if I don't want to wear it since I've been delivered? Well, the, number one, they're in Florida. So it's like your standards, are, I guess, you go to Jesus. And, I, you know, people like to use Jesus a lot of times to be able to refute doing things. Or- that's my no, that's my only problem. They're mm-hmm. trying to use the Bible because just say, hey, I'm not into the gay thing. I don't want to wear a patch. Yeah. I hate when people try to bring white Jesus into every excuse. Praise Jesus not Jesus. Is, didn't die for white excuses. Jesus died for our souls. I heard that when Jesus came back on the, what day did he come back on? December 25th. No, 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 no. How, how many God days before he was resurrected? No, no. How many days before he was resurrected? Three days, man. Third, Three days. The yeah, third I, day. The I third heard day. on the third day when that light hit inside that cave, he sat up and said, I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. I won't date no women. I won't date no more men. <laughs> he ascended to the skies talking about, I said women. I'm not gay. I would not date a man. I would not tear a purse. I would not put on makeup. I will, I will love a woman. I'm like, man, the way he doing all that hollering, you knew he was gonna keep sucking dick. Man, I'm like, man, hold on. You weren't just gay. You might have been a little more. You were carrying a purse and doing all wearing makeup. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's, what, he's what I call flashy gay. Yeah, yeah, you would be all gay, brother. You just go hard. Be a lot yeah. more other letters in that alphabet than you did in all that noise. I will put I will replace my dick that I cut off with the potato. Yeah, <laughs> I won't push yeah. my dick into the foreskin. I will stop, <laughs> taping, I will stop taping it to my booty hole. Uh, stop oh, taping man. my dick up so I can wear a thong. <laughs> oh, uh, that'd be funny if he said all of that too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's basically I, what he said, Pedro. You know, he, you know who I realized looked kind of like him is uh, on Boston. Grant Williams kind of looked like Andrew C. Caldwell. Oh, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs>
Uh, anyways, well, yeah, in, in the end, though, I, I do think that it's the player's choice, and I, I'm, I'll, I'll respect it. I, I do, like Pedro, would hope. Like I said, is, I would totally yeah, respect it if, my, if he said, hey, hey, I don't believe in yeah. it. And then they start bringing religion into it. I'm like, God, just say, hey, I, this is not my thing. It's, this is not what I do. Yeah. So I don't, I don't support, I support family and, or whatever it is that they support. Now I've been fine with it. Then they go bring Jesus into it. Yeah. Lying on God. Yeah. No, I feel that. And, and I also feel like, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's their, it's their right to, to do that. Um, but hopefully, you know what I'm saying? Through like Aaron brought up, you know, corporations who are, you know, marketing and, 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 I mean, that's the reason a lot of teams do it too. Oh, yeah. I mean, let's it's, be real. It's a marketing they, they selling more hats, yeah, more jerseys. That's what it is. Yeah. But and, and but also at the same time, it's a way of acknowledging a demographic that has been underrepresented or, you know, what I'm saying has not gotten the acknowledgement. And so I, I'm I, like, I'm a, I'm I'm all aligned for that. Um, well, you know, what I'm saying well, I would love I love to right. see Black History Month. You know, what I'm saying they give out Black History. You know, that we we get a color scheme or patches or something we like that. We do have a color scheme. Nancy Pelosi wore it in the, <laughs> in the Congress. <laughs> <laughs> Just, we got uh, our logo. Our logo of Patrick will start creating is Nancy Pelosi taking a knee, bro. I'm, I'm doing that. Taking a knee in kente cloth. That's the new black logo. Hey, do we have a picture of that? Can we print that out and put it on t-shirts? We should. Josh Donaldson was suspended one game for insensitive comments aimed at Tim Anderson of the White Sox. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna have to actually give Jared credit on this one for calling it insensitive comment and not a racist comment. What are you talking about? Because you you said Josh Johnson said insensitive and you didn't call it racist. And I'm gonna have oh. to give you credit for that one. Oh, I'm well, sure you was gonna think this was a racist comment. Well, Josh Johnson was suspended for making a racist comment to Dim Anderson. <laughs> Come on, man! Now you're gonna change it. Come on. Official announcement by the MLB says New York Yankees third baseman Josh Donaldson has received a one-game suspension and an undisclosed fine for his inappropriate comments during Saturday's game against the Chicago White Sox. Michael, wait, yeah, Michael Harper, Major League Baseball Senior Vice President on Field Operations, made the announcement. Hill said MLB has completed the process of speaking to the individuals involved in the incident. There is no dispute over what was said on the field. Regardless of Mr. Donald, Mr. Donaldson's intent, the comment he directed toward Mr. Anderson was disrespectful and in poor judgment, particularly when viewed in the context of their prior interactions. In addition, Mr. Donaldson's remarks was a contributing factor in a bench clearing incident between the teams and warrants discipline. The suspension of Donaldson has been scheduled to be effective tonight when the Yankees are to host the Baltimore Orioles. However, Donaldson has elected to appeal Thus, the discipline will be held in abeyance until the process is complete. So on I mean, Saturday, he didn't say it as a racist comment, man. On Saturday, here's the context of what happened. On Saturday, Josh Donaldson got into it with Yasmani Grandal, the Chicago White Sox first baseman and catcher. As they were arguing and bickering, Tim Anderson being on the field was walking towards, and Josh Donaldson said something to the effect of, this ain't your business, Jackie, nigga. Um, he did like not that. say, come on, man. Come you, on. You I, see, you I, put, I, I, believe, I believe that's a misquote. <laughs> that's a very misquote. You put way too much. And, and you said Josh Donaldson got in Yasmani Grandal. Obviously, you didn't watch it, Jerry. No, Yasmani Grandal, Grandal got into it with uh, Donaldson. Whatever. They he, were Donaldson bickering. just walked to the plate. They weren't bickering. Yasmani Grandal went up and hopped in his face and started just pitching. He was just doing it. He was going to the plate. And there's Monty Gradal, who's supposed to get in his stance as a catcher, never got in it and cut him off and started up with him. And what nothing I heard, to do. You're painting. You're doing exactly what you talk about other newscasters and people doing and journalists doing. You're painting a picture. Never. And not giving this right story, man. All right. Well, at some point, Donaldson, after being accosted by Yasmani Grandal, redirected his anger towards Tim Anderson, one of the few black players on the field, and said, listen here, nigga, Jackie. This ain't your business. <laughs> anger, come on, man. You don't even know if he was angry, dude. You don't even know. I mean, I, every time I he see the, every rage. time I see the clip, I don't even see it. Was, it wasn't even like a fighter going on. It was a scrum, but it wasn't no <laughs> fight or anything, a little light yeah. pushing. Well, <laughs> 
regardless of which, he referred to Tim Anderson, the one black player on the field. <laughs> substantial as, details of the story. You're like, called him Jackie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> referred to him, called him Jackie. That is not his name. His name is Tim, last name Anderson. And he called him Jackie, referring to Jackie Robinson. After the game, Donaldson claimed it wasn't a race. There was no racist or malicious intention. He claiming that Tim Anderson had called himself the new Jackie Robinson in 2019. Which so he did. Which then, he did. Donaldson he did. has jokingly referred to him or called him Jackie on the field when he sees him. So, regardless of which, the whole part where he's like, listen here, nigga, Jackie, leave me alone. That's the part where he took it over the line, I think. All he did was call him Jackie. Yeah, that's where you took it over the line. Yeah. Take it line. yeah. No, he true. called him. No. no. He, yeah, this is worse. This is like you. No. This is the opposite. This See, is... Jerry, you're taking the opposite thing of the Chappelle thing. The dude made a joke and a reference to Tim Anderson referring to himself, which he did refer to himself as Jackie Robinson. He said, I'm the new age Jackie Robinson. I'm bringing excitement to this game and this and that. I'm the new age Jackie. Hey, that's part of this banter, man. Uh, hey, okay, I'm getting Jackie. uncomfortable. I'm getting uncomfortable with the part that now white men can't make jokes. Yeah, exactly. Hey, that yeah, wasn't I even want, a racist almost, thing. Yeah, he's making a regular joke. Now, and I will say when... um when he played at Yankee Stadium the next day and they were all calling him Jackie. That was with racist shit. What's sad about this, Pedro, is Jackie Robinson endured real racism, right? Right. You have to fight the real racism. And this fool refers to himself as Jackie Robinson. And so a player calls him Jackie, all of a sudden that guy's yeah. racist. That ain't racist, man. Nowhere near it. That's a shame to what Jackie Robinson went through to claim that was racism. He's making a joke, man. You're, you're basically being angry at the person. I'll tell you this, Josh Johnson is kind of a douchebag. He is he is kind of an abrasive personality. So right. him and Tim Anderson don't he get along. Twice. They don't get along. Um, and so uh, Liam Hendricks came out and said it's pure bullshit if he's saying that this is a joke that they've had between each other. Um, whether or not he did call himself Jackie Robinson, Tim Anderson does not have a relationship where he likes or wants Josh Donaldson to call him Jackie can't control that man they're on opposite sides of the field i know i know i know but it's it's it's, but if it's if it's a nickname there's nicknames you can reserve for yourself and that certain people have the privilege to use with you i see there's a gray area no 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 no. no, no, he made the nickname for himself he made the nickname for himself yeah but he's ripping on his nickname all right pedro daddy dick how many how many women got that as your nickname though you ain't gonna let just some rando call you daddy dick why not? <laughs> if the woman husband want to call your daddy dick, then he allow it. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Why am I going to be mad if somebody going to call me that? Why? Exactly. Cockholding has changed now, Jared. It used to be, used to okay. cockhold somebody and they would hide and, and be halfway with the closet door halfway open. Now, <laughs> they don't want to open the door for you. You're sitting down having a beer, feeding you and talking sports. If they don't want the guy to call him daddy dick, they call him daddy dick. One guy like, call him delicious. I think at the very least, Deshaun Watson is a pervert. Just considering yes. that he had massages by 50 different women in the same year. like that's Oh, oh it wasn't the same year. It was like a three-month well, uh, time period. He called 60 of them. Deshaun Watson is, is one of the worst per- pervert deviants that mankind has. No, this is, this is stupid. You don't do stuff like that. That is, that is disgusting. Wait, wait, wait. He's one of the worst. We got some real bunch of of the worst. In there, right. He did it. He did it. At, well, the way he did it, he was sloppy. You just put it this way. He's really sloppy. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't go around. If you got a problem, you get 10 good women and let them treat you. Whatever. Well, this is what you do. You hire someone whose That's job crazy. is to be, quote, unquote, Brandon, sex worker right in 2022 you go out and you hire See, you a you learned, sex man. worker you go out you hire you a whore <laughs> no you hire you an escort and look you got the money to get a high-end escorts man Deshaun Watson call me man I'll tell you you go to euros.com that's where he got sloppy he, he yeah. wasn't paying he wasn't paying he trying to go to Instagram dollars <laughs> <Yeah, Instagram. trying laughs> <laughs> you're an idiot you know what it's like I don't know what it is friend and you know they say hard times breed breed strong men right and I, I think it's these 2020 times and this internet made shit easy. So it's like, hey, you know how you always talk about people got the game twisted, Brandon? I think because the internet just made some things easy and they think they could keep it easy, right? Problem is that is the Sean Watson should have been a little bit more like RP. 
Listen, be quiet, bitch. You know nothing. Can you be quiet one time? Yes. Yes, I can. Drunk or no drunk. Just be quiet one time and listen. Okay. And I'm going to let you know why you threw up. <laughs> He was gonna let her know. That's what I love. That's what I love. I'm gonna let you know why you threw up. Drunk or no That's drunk. Funny. That's funny. Well, back to your original thing. Um, talking about the league, man. Like I, I'm not in favor for the NFL legislating any of this, right? Like they, like they're just their employer, right? Like now, yeah. the only reason they want to be involved is because it makes the league look bad. That's the only reason they want to be involved. They don't care if you killed somebody in a, in a DUI last night or you. <laughs> Men are little. <laughs> they, they don't care. Ben Roethlisberger. They just yeah. want to know, hey, if this person shows up to work on Monday, is it going to look bad on us? Because right yeah. now, if you work in a school, you can get DUI as long as you show up on Monday. You ain't even got to tell. You ain't got to tell the district. <laughs> you can show up work like 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 nothing happened. Like you was at home reading a book all weekend. There's people probably cooked your food today. That's probably got some cases pending. Mm-hmm. Against them, right. And so it is what it is. Right? I think. I think. I'm happy that he is playing because I think that just por- forces everybody to really think about the legal system that's that allows this sort of thing to happen where where there's a reasonable assumption that there's a crime committed or at least something that shouldn't have happened. And like he does, he's not in danger of going to jail as long as he has the money to pay off people. And I think we're going to be reminded of that every time we see the Cleveland Browns play. And I think that's... I think a net positive for people to really start thinking about it outside of sports, man. Well, paying them off wasn't going to keep them out of jail. No, well, that's the thing. Like they had, but they had the options, right? Because everybody, everyone who filed a civil suit had the option. The police came to them and say, "Do you want to press criminal charges against him?" Because they need their testimony. It's not like there's any video yeah. of this happening. It's but some like of them, some of them did. Before they took the money, they did, but it never made it through the grand jury. The grand jury is to, is to let them know if we have a criminal case. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This I think there's an evil Pedro. You got, you got the dude. Dude, one Pedro's moving and the other one's not. This is tripping me out, dude. Pedro, man, you are not doing the same thing to be one of these videos. It's tripping me out. Uh... Dude, Pedro, are you sure you just gotta eat? Dude? I think we hit like a, a upside down world or all. Uh, the man, it's the us, the us version of Pedro. That's exactly what came out right there. Dude. Pedro C C one thirty six. Pedro's was, tether was, came on. <laughs> man, I was in. I was multiversing right there. Exactly. Wow. That uh, was crazy. Man. I'm the first. I'm the first Negro to ever multiverse. Yeah, yeah. one of them. You look like you could have been on well, well, the TV in my grandparents' house, just like just fade, <laughs> faded and ashy looking. And then the other one, you over here in HD. You know, what I'm saying got an HDMI. Pedro over here looking youthful, man. He over here looking juicy. <laughs> yeah, one one you look at, you're all shining like you got your cocoa butter all on yourself. <laughs> Not as frustrated. Yeah. Other, one, other one, you look come like, on, like you need Never to go one of them late. Night info burst talking about get one of these niggers, please. I'd take him home, but I have a dog. <laughs> That's fucked up. Dude. I'm sure like that. That's fucked up, dude. Richard, Richard Pryor, man. He wasn't a general, was he, Brandon? Like Deshaun Watson? <laughs> he was a junkie. Oh, man. you degenerate, all right. With a little bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Pedro also sounds like Michael Clark Duncan on this channel. Yeah, he sounds like his sound change. The other one, he sounds like he sound like one of those no. broken drunk guys no. that's trying to kick you knowledge outside the liquor store. You know what I'm talking about, Brandon. When you went to go see Ma. When you went to go see Ma, the one of the guys just showed up with the exact, the exact amount of change for a 211. And you're like, God damn, this motherfucker put it down exactly. I guess my last question about Deshaun Watson, though, uh, is... Do you think that this suspension should have been longer? And is it better for the NFL to not have the power and decision making in these suspensions? In my in my opinion, I would have suspended him ten games just for being sloppy. But he, <laughs> damn, yeah, it's take what you did. Sloppy. It's because you're sloppy. Because you're sloppy. Do the shit better. You making the you making the you making them lead the. You making us look bad. Ben Roethlisberger didn't make us look this bad. Right? Yeah, because Ben Roethlisberger is white. First of all, white man, let me say that I love you, honor you, envy you, enjoy your smell, and I celebrate you in the name of white Jesus. Beautiful white man. He got six games. He got six games. Yeah. 
They both got six games. But he actually that, that rapes his, He actually raped some two people, at least two yeah. people that we know about that. Like I mean, about. I mean, technically the judge. I mean, I mean, technically, is it fingers yeah. rape? <laughs> yes, it is. Don't <laughs> well, tell that to Ben Roethlisberger and his wife. Yes, it is. Yeah. But people being disgusted, man. You you know the head of your leagues, the quarterbacks, man. You you you're held to a higher standard. These guys got to understand that they can't go out in, in Baker Mayfield. <laughs> no, see, that's the punishment should have been. They should have had to keep Baker Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> that's the punishment. Well, One see, year. That's he league, suspended for a year. He suspended for a year. You got to keep Baker Mayfield as your short quarterback. <laughs> exactly. For, for that whole year. <laughs> uh, I was expecting a whole year, to be honest. And even the Browns were expecting that because they gave him that shitty ass contract. Remember, he didn't make a lot of money off of this. What was it, three million for this year? All of us put on all the years after this year to mm-hmm. kind of make up for him being suspended. They figured he might be out oh. the whole year, and so I would have just gave him the whole year just for signing that, uh, having the audacity to sign that that contract. Cleveland had the audacity to even offer this shit up. No, I was suspended. Yeah, mo- mo- multiple no. teams wanted to sign him, though. Like it was well, like, what I'm saying, no, he's worth the money. It was like eight, there was like eight teams trying to sign him. Like they, mm-hmm. they just they, was the ones they, like I would give it full guarantee. How about just nobody signs him? Just be like, we're not signing you, Texans. You guys can just not have play him another year. They already played uh-huh. him, didn't play him a whole year. If they wanted to, they could have just tried to outright cut him. But I guess that you know they don't want to lose the value from him. So it, it comes down to it, it, it's it's a, it's a dirty game where I think the NFL is better not to have it in their hands. We've gotten used to the NFL having it in their hands, so the NFL has become the arbiter and the example and the standard and within our own, you know, you talk about how sports influence society. People, a lot of people look at how the NFL handles discipline about how, you know what I'm saying? Now regular people should be handled with their discipline, you know? And I think it's a big, and we argued about this, you know, whether the NFL and its suspension process and practices was a precursor to cancel culture. Cause I think it honestly was, I think it was <laughs> easy to see players do something that maybe wasn't that big a deal and get major consequences for it. Some players did some shit, that shouldn't have been, they shouldn't have done and deservedly got big consequences for it. But we got used to seeing players miss entire seasons, never get their career off the ground because of marijuana and other drugs. Regardless, we got used to that. And it got used to pe- people seeing like, hey, man, you get canceled for a whole year or two. The NFL, you've done for that whole season. You've done for several seasons. We're used to it now. Society now comes along and says, you said something bad on Twitter. You done for at least a year or two. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of shit. I, th- I think it influenced sports. So I think it's good for the NFL not to have the power because I don't know if the NFL necessarily in its power in the way it influences society as a reflection of society and an impact on society was doing the best job or doing something that was actually like leading us to a more thoughtful society. I think it was just like you do some wrong, crazy ass punishment and the NFL like could just be do whatever they want. because Goodell had the power. The owners had the power. In sports news, Pat Bev is now a Los Angeles Lakers, L- Los Angeles Laker. Is this the end of Russell Westbrook in L.A. now that Pat Bev is there, or can they coexist? No, no one could coexist with Westbrook, man. <laughs> See, the thing like about, the one I think you get Patrick Beverly is that he don't take anything personal, and then when he joins your team, you his teammate, right? Mm-hmm. And he's going to do the same shitty-ass antics that he do because he's not that great of a player against every other team. Yeah. The problem is right. Westbrook ain't the kind of motherfucker that forgives and forgets. Yeah. Oh, here's a good one. All right. Since they're both aging and, and very mediocre players who only are reasonably good at one thing because they put all their energy into it, who you taking? Pat Bev or PJ Tucker? Tucker. Okay. What about you, Pedro? PJ Tucker. Darius, how about you? PJ Tucker or Pat Bev? I'm taking PJ Tucker. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. PJ Tucker and his ability to slide. Uh, what is half of 94? Um, 47, on, 47 feet across the floor trying to sell a fl- sell a sell a charge. I'll take Wait, him. He sell a charge. A lot of people sell charge. Maybe not as exaggerated as he did in that one moment. But yeah. the one thing I give PJ Tucker is that he could fit in. He could guard more people than. Yeah, that's people. the only reason why I would take him because, like you said, he can guard basically one through four. Pat's going to give you one, two, three, maybe two. Maybe just one or two. I don't know if he can guard a one. Well, I don't know if he can guard a one because he's going to go right by him. He can get physical with the one, especially an older one. But guarding a three, if it's a big three, no. Yeah, a skilled three, they'll just shoot over him. Um, All right, Uh, who are you taking, PJ Tucker or Pat Bev, if you got to fight an unruly fan in the stands? Uh, If I got to fight an unruly fan in the stands, is uh, Charles Barkley still available? No, no, Pat Bev or PJ Tucker. Who you who you taking in a in a fight in the stands with you? Well, have one, either one of them fought in the stands? 
No, but it's just saying who would you who's whose energy would you rather have? Uh, shit, I don't know, man. You keep you 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 picking motherfuckers that I don't want to be in a fight with. I want I want to go with Ron Artest or Steven Jackson, and you you you. <laughs> Well, you giving me fucking Reggie Miller, man. Like, no, I ain't going to stand well, for Reggie there Miller. Was, oh there God. was like, it was like Stack Jack or Reggie Miller. Who would you rather have going to stand for? That's an fight easy question, you? of course. Exactly. You know well, that. this one, well, this one's a little harder because you got both dudes who are tryhards defensively. Um, and bring a lot fighters. of They ain't the type to fight people, though, Jared. Look, look, I ain't going to call up. I'm not going to go call up Sam Johnson when I need to roll out on somebody. <laughs> so you're having me compare two people that ain't going to scrap. Man, pick one. Well, I gotta pick one of these. Well, Pat Ben gets everybody's. If, you, to everybody's me, if you say Charles Oakley or Stephen Jackson, good. That's a good question. Right now, you have me taking two fools. I was like, hey man, hey, who you gonna? Have? Man, you involved in a father son three point contest, and you could bring anybody you want, as long as they older than you. You bring in Shaq <laughs> or, or 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 Bill Russell. Ain't neither one right now, dude. The- well, well, Bill Russell, Bill Russell, that ain't gonna work. Uh, first of all, <laughs> second of all, um. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a little pick. So I think y'all thinking about it backwards, man. I'm thinking about the nigga who's going to get the most attention and get it off of my back so I could dip on out on that nigga. I'm going to have to choose Pat Bev because a lot of people would want to stump the fuck out of Pat Bev. (laughs) And that means I could just dip out while that nigga getting his ass beat. So less pressure on me. Pat Bev getting stumped out. Niggas ain't trying to stump out PJ Tucker. He all talking about please, 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 no, please. So I'm gonna go with Pat Bev, man. He's gonna say one too many things. The whole crowd gonna beat his little ass. And I'm out. All right. Last one then. Last one. Who would you rather have if you needed for some rule? There's a rule exemption that you needed to have a player for um inept offensive ability. Who would you take? Pat Bev or PJ Tucker? Offensive ability. Oh, wait a minute. Say it again. They, you need a player that has the least offensive ability and is inept offensively. Who you taking, PJ Tucker or Pat Bev? I'm so confused. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, if not being good on offense was a good thing, and you needed to fill a role on your team, this, this is like the bright question, Jerry. Just <laughs> pass. I pass. I pass. <laughs> don't you coming from Pedro with these crazy ass questions, Jared asking? Yes. Uh, it's like the bright question. I'm gonna take, uh, but I'll take PJ Tucker, man, because at least he can hit the corner three. No, no, he needs to be not good on offense. <laughs> see, oh, see I'm God it. damn it, Jared! <laughs> Shit, man, <laughs> just ask the question straight up. <laughs> Which nigga's weaker on offense? <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna have to again go PJ Tucker, man, uh, because I think that nigga might produce something. But I will say, this is the weirdest phrase question you've ever asked. <laughs> Thank you, Adarius. I don't understand what kind of question this is. All right. Well, that wraps up our Who Would You Take segment. (laughs) In the sports social justice system, subjects are debated by two separate yet equally important groups. The sack riders, who will invest in any rhyme or reason to justify their fandom. I don't give a fuck. And the player haters, who would persecute their own grandmother or even their unborn child if they offended them. Yes, they deserve to die, and I hope they burn in hell. These are their debates. The Golden State Warriors are now the NBA champions of 2022. Uh, The Warriors won the title and now are four-time champions. I guess the question is, uh, with this title win for Steph Curry and the way he performed this season, has he made his way into your top 10. Is he now a top 10 player in your eyes? You mean top 10 all time? All time, yes. Aaron's got got, got a list. I'm going to go last because I got my list, but I want to hear from Woody because you're not from the Bay Area. I want to hear your version because I'm out here hearing some crazy shit out here, Woody. I'm going to be honest with you. It's some crazy stuff. I've been the (laughs) fool showing up at the parade with a goat in the Steph Curry jersey. I thought that was stupid as shit. (laughs) Uh, Only thing that was good for was giving people some milk that they passed out at that hot ass parade. (laughs) <laughs> One person tweeted out, called me, and you try to use my words, try to use my words to say that Steph Curry was number one all-time greatest player. I thought it was just the craziest shit has been said. So what do you go first? Yeah, top 10, I think, is kind of, I think that's a little, I think it's kind of pushed in it. Don't get, now look, don't get me wrong, I like Steph Curry. Top 10, I don't. It's, greatest light skin person alive. You're saying off the strength of winning his first finals MVP. 
No, no. At this point in his career, and uh-huh. with the four titles, with the finals MVP now, two regular season MVPs, with the resume he's put together, and it's not over yet. So there is that caveat. Right. Everyone always right. needs to keep that in mind. Right. Um, so like mm-hmm. your 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 standard of your top ten, but based upon this year, like he's trying to change his opinion, no, Jared. He just right, can't no, be his no, no, no. Just, just based You're upon this year, I'm not trying to change it. I'm just trying to clarify for him. Based upon this year's uh, performance in his career to this point, would has he cracked mm-hmm. your top ten? Is he a top ten player? I don't think so. No, 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 not, 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 maybe not yet. Is he close? Yes, I think he's close. I would say, I would say top 20. Yep, top 20. I would say top 20. I would say top 20. Uh, what about you, Pedro? So two of those championships don't count. Um, they count, but they don't carry the same amount of weight. Yeah, as they don't count. How do they two don't. championships well, not count? Not every championship count. carries the same amount of weight, Woody. I do agree with this. Look, no, I'll, be I'll be honest. I'll be honest. They you count. Have, they just don't carry the same amount of weight. You can't have four fucking all stars on the team. They you know, count. Hey, they just it. don't carry the no. same amount of weight. <laughs> See, Pedro, people ain't gonna listen to arguments. Oh, going wait, back wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No. So you mean to tell me? So let so let me go back. And here. Pedro's personal record book: the Warriors, Steph Curry has two titles. So yeah, so, two titles. so you think about this. So if you go back and talk about the Heat, let's talk about those Heat teams. Mm-hmm. So you had what? D Wade, uh, Chris Bosh, and LeBron. Overrated, Chris Bosh. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. He was he was an All Star. He was a first team right. NBA player. And I complain <laughs> about them too. But guess what? Yeah. Okay, at least you're but LeBron consistent. still got okay. full. Okay, at least you're consistent. Okay, all right. That, no, I can right plan about them. But the Miami Heat did they not make the playoffs the year before, and, and the Miami, Shane they only had the Ray Allen for one year or two years. Yeah, they beat North Oklahoma without Ray Allen. Ray Allen was there for the yeah, two right. San Antonio. But okay. I will tell this: Miami Heat did not make the playoffs the year before, or, or the year even before that. They were not a good team. It's much different from Kevin Durant going to a 73 win team, LeBron and, and Chris Bosch going to a Miami Heat team. Yeah, but, but also when you bring an entirely new team and change the entire team except for the one superstar dude, and did you Giannis has and don't, and don't forget the money because of the money reasons, they weren't deep at all. They weren't they deep at all. Shane they're Betty, relying on Mike Norris Miller. Cole. They're relying on Norris Cole. They didn't yes. no, they they drafted they Mario Chalmers. The they had Mario Chalmers out of Kansas. <laughs> Your David players that didn't even last. Mario four years Chalmers in the hit big years. shots in that in that in that NCAA I like Mario finals. Chalmers. Don't don't quote me on Mario Chalmers. I like Mario Chalmers. Yeah, he 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 kept. If Derrick Rose that, know how to make a free throw, got the Mario that Chalmers title. wouldn't hit a big shot. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> don't blow up that. We are arguing about titles though, right now. To make your to... argument. Let's, let's okay. stick to let's stick to this. Let part, Pedro though. finish so I can get to my Brandon Shields screen. Why isn't he a top ten or why is he a top ten? He's. Did you go top ten? Oh, he's not a top ten because he had he had no effect on just but one of those championships. I would say I actually would say the first one he had effect on too, but they didn't give him the MVP. They gave it to Iguodala for some silly ass reason. I show you how much LeBron was balling. It's a it's a weird time because he has he's we're in the, what do, what do they call this the hand check era. So this game is more suited for Steph Curry, and he should have dominated that that first first, first series uh, when they won the championship. Far as him being top ten, no, just not quite there yet. He's got he's got about five more years, I would say. See where he'll he be thirty nine in five years. I don't know if he's got five. Years. <laughs> he got about three. Thirty four. Thirty four. Three years. Three years. Well, he's a shooter. I mean, yeah. Like y'all, he, can, he, can, he can age gracefully as a shooter, hopefully. That's just it's true. What uh, what about you, Brandon? Yeah, it's, I think it's one of my Kenny Corey shout outs at least a couple times, man, about this NBA talk, man. I think I think football has it right the way we celebrate athletes. Like Tony Saragusa passed away this past week, right? People love Tony Saragusa. Ain't on an all-time list, but he played really well for the Ravens for a couple years. Love forever. Nobody has anything bad to say about him. And I think in basketball, we got to this place where we got to talk shit about all these amazing basketball players to try to make another basketball player look better. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you sound and like Chris like, Smith. Steph Curry's amazing. I think he's a really good basketball player. 
He's made $45 million a year. Excuse me. Uh, Steph Curry's made more money in one year than Matt Johnson did his entire career. But you're missing the point, though, Brandon. The reason why we do this to basketball, because one player can have a large impact on the game. Whereas football, yes, one player has a large impact, but you still need – you could be Lauren Taylor and Ronnie Lott on one side of the field and not have an offensive line or running back on the other side and be nothing, right? But in basketball, one player does affect – they play both offense and defense. Unlike baseball, where you have a pitcher – that could dominate the game where like, Hey man, I, I can't play pitcher and left field at the same time in basketball. You can, you are out there and it's not like hockey where, you know what? You play a quick 45 second shifts. And when the games, when it's all said and done, your top player, Connor Davis, you're like, Hey, which one was it? He? he only played 26 minutes. Right. <laughs> when you look at the total minutes, basketball, looking at, you know, 40, 37, 35 to Depends on what error, 40 minutes. I, I do agree right. with you. We but do put players like, down. We shouldn't put players down. And I, I had this argument with Jerry yeah. where I said, look, if I got Steph Curry in my top 20, that's amazing. If you're in the top 20, that's not a sign of disrespect. Jared, I would say he's there. He's in my top 20. Top 10, I I, I don't, I'm, I'm just not there. They ripped him off for that first MVP. That MVP. Uh, I don't know, Pedro. I, I think it should Here's have been the thing. because this he got the, the team there. This is, this is the thing you got to understand. Steph Curry didn't even get a second place vote for MVP. Steph did have a really good series. He was averaged 26, six assists Don't look and five average. rebounds. Go game, go game by game. Yeah, game by game, 26, 19, 27, 22, 37, 25. But what was his, what was his scoring average for the season? That's what hurt him because no, no, he no, averaged no. 30 for the season, 30 yeah. something for the well, season. Well, I just figure if you get part. him there, I figure you give him You're the leading scorer like that you. wins. And it's not like he was 26. I don't mean else. you should be MVP. Yeah, well, I don't mean MVP though. Well, no, no, Look, I, LeBron I think LeBron, so LeBron probably could have been MVP for the for a couple of those years that he lost well, titles. Well, that was you know what was funny? That was one of the years that everyone said LeBron should if if it wasn't for this whole like we only pick winners since the Jerry Rice debacle. I mean Jerry West debacle, the first year to ever happen yeah. finals MVP, they get they gave it to Jerry West. If it wasn't for that, LeBron would have probably won it that year. LeBron has got two people who won finals MVP just on the defense they played against LeBron. Kawhi well, Leonard won finals MVP. When he was in San Antonio, he had two games in which he scored, beating the score 10 points. Yeah, it was like he won finals points. MVP. Yeah. <laughs> he won finals MVP in a series in which LeBron averaged almost 30, almost average a triple double. Jared, let's describe your top 10 to us. Because my I'm, top I'm 10 where, is where, where you have it. Well, my top 10 is some, I've seen a couple top 10s, but I'll say what Chris Broussard said. He said Steph Curry is undoubtedly top 10 because he's he has as many titles as LeBron in LeBron's era. And he has as many titles, his more titles than KD, if you want to call it that LeBron and KD era. So this is really actually the Steph Curry era, almost uh, equally as it's obviously LeBron's era. It's LeBron. No, no. It's don't, LeBron's say, don't, era. don't say something stupid like that. No, no, it's not something stupid. <laughs> that was the last thing I thought you were going to say right now. But yeah. you, can call now. This, you can call this Steph Curry's era too. Because when you think about it. Well, LeBron's 39 years old. Steph Curry's 34 years old. It's a five-year difference. He was 141 years old when he fought. Yeah, that nigga was 140. <laughs> this is still LeBron's era. I know. It's, it's still LeBron's uh, era, and his era is ending, and it's it's turning into a Steph Curry era right now, right? We don't know. It okay. might be Giannis era. Oh, it, it could we be Giannis don't know. era. But what I will say is that Steph Curry, I believe, is, you know, in the top 10, yeah. Big Larry Bird. Yeah. All right, what has he done? What has he done? Played on a loaded team. Played in Boston where they cheated the, their opponents. Loaded. His team was not loaded, dude. Yeah, <laughs> okay. He has all them, all them Hall of Famers teams on the squad. League, so, every, so many he Hall of Famers. Two Hall of, so he had three, Hall of two other Hall of Famers. Two. Bill Walton does not count. Right. Bill Walton was there for two years, and one of them, he all was right, not so, healthy. So you got, all right. Shaq. You got Will Chamberlain. You got Bill Russell. That's three of the top ten right there. This iteration, this year, Steph Curry, the player that I saw this playoffs and in that finals, is a top ten player. That is so what I will one say. one year, then. I know that, Aaron. But like, there's there's plenty of other players. And like Tim Duncan, Aaron, you break down the, the Spurs dynasty. Tim Duncan, everyone keeps keeping him in the top ten. People put him above Shaq. He wasn't better than Shaq, in my opinion. He didn't dominate Shaq. He never played against Shaq when they needed him to play against Shaq. He didn't stop Shaq. Tim Duncan, great player. I don't know if he should be in the top ten. This iteration I saw of Steph Curry is something similar to what I saw of, uh, of what Tim Duncan could do. Now Tim Duncan did it over this over a long career and he finished his career. He got four titles or five titles. Great, but this version of Steph Curry where playing on the ball and off the ball, the entire defense of your opponent is playing frantically and having to know where he is at all times. They had to know where he was at all times. It, it wasn't like that in 2015 and 14, the same way as it is now. The level he was playing at with playing off the ball, hitting mid-range jump shots, going to the hoop and getting around the basket, still not getting very many calls as a guy who was actually going to the hoop more than Jason Tatum, going to the 
to the basket more than most of the players on Boston, and he's not getting the calls. I'm not saying he deserved all the calls, but he played a game and he played at a level where everyone, he was the best player on the court. Um, and in yeah. this day and age, like for that's one tight. final, for one final, some people say one final, Jerry, he was yeah, the best player one, on the final. Okay. One, one final. Okay. One final. And the other, the other argument that I'll have, because, huh. because you can take a, a completely like it's, it's uh, black and white. Hold on. It's black and white with the KD years. Steph Curry still balled in those, in those I, I didn't finals. take the black and white. I don't I'm, I'm just saying, but, like, did. don't discount the fact that Steph Curry still did ball in those finals. He wasn't the most dominant player on the court because he didn't need to be, but he's also somebody that I think plays into, like, why maybe people don't hold him in the top 10 or what, maybe the reason why you could put him in the top 10 is that he's a dude that said, I'm willing to play with other great players and I don't need to, like, fight with the other great You, We've seen other great players come together and link up together, and it's, it's friction. It's not working out. We've seen that happen. James Harden can't stay on the team. Russell Westbrook can't be on the team because they can't play with other players, and they can't impact the game in a way that Steph Curry can. And so when you're looking at the whole scope of the beauty and the jazz that is basketball, that movement, that flow, Steph Curry embodied that this year at the highest level that we've seen. You know, you could put that on any other player's highest level. Like, this is their peak. This Steph Curry was a peak that I think – Compared yeah, to any other players, out right now, Jerry. Yeah, That's he, all I'm saying. Yeah, he, he, no, he, I'm he, saying this no, I'm saying this year. No, I hope. I hope when, he, when when Jerry ends this, he can hear how much he's fanboying. No, no, right? I, I, no, I feel, I feel, like I feel confident biased. about that. You're not being unbiased in this conversation. But I agree. He was the best player he, on the court, and he was jazz, and he was all that. But you still the number, you're, against the number you're, one. You're using that one year, using this one year against number one defense. No, and you, yes, you use it one year. To yeah, move them up. yeah. Sometimes that's what happens yeah. when you have a when, when, when you. That's fucking ridiculous. No, no. And here's the other thing. And Aaron doesn't agree. And, and I'll say this, Woody. And I don't know if you heard this from me. And Brandon is that he's also and Aaron's gonna be mad about this. He's also bad on convention because to be he would be the smallest dude in the top ten. Uh, most of his conventional top tens. Most dudes are six six or bigger. They're, they're two guards. You act bigger. like he. You act like he lining up against Shaq and Tim I, Duncan. And, I'm just, <laughs> but I'm saying the, the. I've seen Shaq affect the game to where, like, there's nothing you can do about it. I saw Steph Curry this year affect the game to where where he proved he's that also, like, you could do anything about one, it. It didn't matter what he did. He's also the one person that you have in your top ten that had a parent that played in the NBA that also grew up with money and also had all the resources that he could. Kobe Bean Bryant had a have that. Yeah, that in the NBA. Oh, too. excuse me, excuse yeah. me, excuse me. I don't know. I don't know if Kobe Bean Bryant's in Jared's top ten. But I know, I know that that one that that for sure. Steph Curry wasn't shooting on no on no courts with bent rims and shit like that. Anyways, or in, or back in New York with the snow. Right. Well, Aaron, so, Aaron, so Jerry, Aaron, Jerry, you're downplaying. Jerry you're downplaying the ability of his shooting I'm right there. Down, by I'm, anyway, down, so. I'm downplaying ahead, Brandon, you using that ahead, as a reason to give him bonus points. My, my only point I'm just gonna make. I, I think Steph Curry, Steph Curry's a great player, but when they, he and KD were on the same team, nobody said Steph Curry was better because everybody saw KD. <laughs> Because he's battling ball. Yeah, if you have a seven dribble footer that can dribble, shoot and dribble, literally and dunk, dribble around six no, foot three. No, so right there, he could at seven feet tall. He can dribble around anybody. He can dribble around point guards. He can dribble around centers. Anybody. He can shoot over anybody. He can make the same shot as Steph Curry makes. I contend mm-hmm. the level of like, skill that Steph says, Curry displays hey, is higher than hey. Kevin Durant's because he's smaller, and the layups he gets to finish are uncontested dunks for Kevin Durant. People are like he's seven foot. There's no point in challenging him. He's gonna dunk it on me. Steph Curry, everyone still challenges him, and he still finishes at a very high percentage. You can't. So but, if you're gonna ignore that, come on, guys. Jared, but Jared, 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 everybody's tall. Sean Bradley is not a top ten player. And he was tall for the goal. I don't know you why. Know, he's everybody's tall. tall. Brandon, it's like tall I said to Aaron, it's not a good no, argument. Like I said to Aaron, no, no, it's not a good it argument. It is. It's no. It is a good argument. It's, it's a, a argument. It's a sport it's that's predicated man. partially on height. What are you talking about? Not, Every, I'm not giving them bonus points, though. I'm not saying it's bonus points. I'm saying it's it's a it's grading on a slight curve. You, why are you bring it up? It's all why about relativity. Because it is about relativity. It is about relativity. You gonna take everybody' energy away before I get to my top ten, man? Anyways. <laughs> Let's get to Aaron's top ten since he since he is so adamant. Mm-hmm. Now let me tell you, my top ten gonna bring out some some problems too, especially my number one. My number one is not equal to everybody. Oh, see, Jerry gonna leave out during my time. You see this shit? You see this? He gonna walk away when it's time. <laughs> and Pedro walked away. <laughs> I can't believe this. I can't. You know what? I'm gonna sit here. We I ain't gonna say my top ten today. Both get that. Which athlete do you watch solely because 
of the way they look or present and not the way they play. And you don't care what happens in their personal life. Or maybe you do. Yeah. Who wants to start? Uh, Darius? I mean, I, I'm, I'd rather not, man, because, you know, <laughs> I'm married. Man, he yeah. is married. Page, how about let's go to the person that's been married for long, a long ass time. I mean, Page, I, listen, I'll, I'll I'll give mine generally. Uh, fuck, All right, I'll give them real. Uh, so Ronda Ronda, Ronda Rousey is one of them, uh, just because she's a badass. She's just tough. I like. Well, you want to put you want to put you in a, a triangle choke, don't you? With all that hard urine she got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All that drool hanging out of her mouth. All that hard mouth. urine from steroids. He said. Yeah. Dude, um, I heard a story. Some dude said that one of my homeboys said he messed with one of those bodybuilders at the Las Vegas Convention Center. And he said having sex with her smelled like he was having sex with a horse. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I I never forget the dude Jay he's from Cleveland too. This nigga was crazy. <laughs> he said this she smelled so strong after having sex with her because you know, all those steroids. <laughs> they got that hormone. Shout out to Pride Bunt, extra hormone. <clears throat> um and then Liz, I think her name is Liz Cambridge. Oh, you yeah. stole my stole Pedro. Yeah, you yeah. stole mine. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. You I didn't know. It was mul- I didn't know it's multiple people on this show that like women that got bigger feet than Shaq. <laughs> I am proud of you, Sick bastards! I didn't know. I didn't know all you guys have foot. Well, fetishes. since it's Pride, well, since it's Pride Month. Hey, hey, well, tell me this. Liner. Well, tell me this. Tell me this. Do you guys also get off on the Statue of Liberty's foot? That's what it seems that's like. like. That's like a five hundred and fifty Jesus. That's movie. what it seemed like when she on the beach or wearing sandals. I'm like, hey, is that the statue of Liberty? Oh no, it's Liz Campbell. She typically don't wear sandals for that reason. Man, I seen, I seen her. Oh, she I seen said her. she had. Oh, I yeah, seen she her. Sandals on. Very, I seen her on Reddit. Feet. She had some sandals. Yeah, she has had some yeah, sandals. Very huh? pretty feet. All right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> very pretty big feet. Very, very, very pretty feet. Uh, Toes is longer than my hand. <laughs> Toes so long, make you want to do something strange. <laughs> you got to be pride, mother. I can't, 